Hello, hello, and welcome to Tarot Parlor Podcast. This episode is all about your questions. I don't do personal private readings anymore, but I do allow people to submit questions to me through an email, and I may or may not use your question to create a tarot podcast. If you have a a particular question, you can email me with a question you'd like me to address in one of my podcasts with a reading at witchofendor at yahoo.com. And I will put this email in the description box below this video at YouTube. I will be using a Rider White based deck tonight, and I do believe it is the Dreamkeeper's Tarot. This reading is going to address family affairs. It will address uh, the querent, the person who sent me the question, her mother, as well as two siblings. I have four piles of cards here. And what I'm going to do, because I know there are four individuals involved, is I have four piles, one for you, one for your mother, and one for each of your siblings. So the first card I draw will be for you. Four of Swords. This is someone who is in a state of recuperation. It's also someone who has been set apart uh, from the mainstream throng and all the activity and hoopla and chaos. Someone who has been sequestered um, quietly for a respite. A recovery. Uh, it's a very peaceful, very beautiful card in this deck. Also, I feel that during this time that you have been apart from your main group or your your family members, um, they have been paying more attention to what has been going on with you than you were aware of, but in kind of a creepy way. Does that make sense? That's just the feeling I'm getting here. Okay, the next card is for your mother, Four of Cups. Uh, She is like one to pretend that nothing is wrong and and, um, go marching along and ignore an issue. Uh, It's like It's like being faced with something and not wanting to face something or having something. (laughs) This Four of Cups. This Four of Cups is all about putting off, doing something, facing something, dealing with something. It's, it's It's almost like an art form where she's concerned, I have a feeling. Um, It feels like someone who has done this her whole life if she just pretends an issue isn't there and if she doesn't look it will go away card for sibling number one the lovers Uh, a very detached feeling here Um, within her life if she does have a, a spouse or partner there is a sense of detachment and there's also kind of a feeling of uh, kind of yeah it's it's a very it's a very strange detachment it's it's um she also likes to show the world one face or have People view her and her life or her situation or her relationship one way. But the way that it really is, there's a lot going on in her life that people aren't aware of and they don't see and she doesn't want them to see and she doesn't show them. Um, She's very concerned with um, how things look on the surface, um, on the outside and to the public. Sibling number two, the chariot. (laughs) Um, this, this sibling is always in a hurry to go somewhere, and sometimes she, she has this chaotic energy about her where she wants to go someplace, she wants to get something done, and she wants to wrap something up, but, but she hasn't thought things through very well. She, like, she, like, she feels like a whirling dervish, a whirling dervish of energy and intention, but without a lot of focus. That makes sense. 
Okay, we're back to you again. Isn't this fun? <laughs> I don't know if that's a yes or a no I might hear out there. <laughs> so the next card for you is the Ace of Cups. This is like all about new beginnings. This is emotional beginnings. This is like wiping the slate clean on how you feel about something or someone and starting over. Let's just wipe the slate clean and let's start over. Um, and it's also she's really gripping the cup. The character is really gripping the cup on this card. It's like it's like having a better grip on your emotions. It's what the phrase that popped into my head. Uh, starting over with a clean slate, better grip on the emotions and um, a new beginning. Next is another card for your mother, the fates. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, the, the fates. It shows three female characters on here that are incomplete in, in horizontal strips all through the picture. It's like it's like um, like they support each other or a piece of one helps to make up a piece of the other one and the next one and so on. It's like they kind of mesh together, and it gives me the feeling of a group of people who conspire. <laughs> like they're all in this together. That's my feeling from this card. Okay, we're back to sibling number one again. The world. Well, this is that sibling that is very concerned about outward appearances. And at some point in life some at some point in her life something is going to like peel her down to the bone there there's a, a feeling of being exposed there's a feeling of showing too much um there's a feeling of oh she's trying so hard not to she's trying so hard not to there is the feeling of an individual who has a lot of different opinions but they go in lots of different directions. So so she can be very confusing in what she expects of you or what she thinks of someone, what she wants someone to do or what she wants to do for someone. She's like kind of scattered in her sense of direction and all the while it's like it's like someone you know the dreams people have, our naked dreams where we're like naked in school with no homework. It's kind of like that feel that that she wants to avoid. She wants to avoid feeling vulnerable and exposed. She doesn't want the world to see with clarity down to the bone that she she has a certain face that she wants to give the public. That just keeps coming up with her. Sibling number two. We're on to sibling number two. Uh, this was the chaotic energy sibling that just heads off helter-skelter. Uh, the card that I drew for her is the Queen of Pentacles. And the energy is exactly opposite. Oh, the energy is exactly opposite of the first card. Is is this sibling, sibling number two, bipolar, by the way? We have the chariot with this frantic energy of go, 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 go. And I don't care which direction we're going or how we're going to do it. We'll, you know, flutter through it. And then a card with very grounded, very stable, solid slow energy so it's like it's like opposites and I have to be wondering if she's not um, if she's not bipolar or at least highly emotionally erratic <laughs> was that a nice way to put it up and down up and down back and forth another card for you a page of wands There's the idea of someone here who's tried very hard to say something. The character on this card is holding an old-fashioned record, and she's holding the needle in her hand to the record as the, as her 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 wand, her large staff, is laying in the crook of her arm. She's someone who has tried so hard to communicate with someone, and they're not listening. They're not accepting the communication or they're not understanding her. It's like a, a miscommunication, no communication, and a real struggle um, to be heard. A card for your mother. 
the Hierophant. Really stern. I get really stern energy here and very, very conventional and very fixed. And oh my God, there's like the the uh, 18th uh, the 19th century lady on this card. But behind her face, there's two faces on either side, almost like the art that you see that depicts the triple goddess with three faces. Those other two faces back there are your sisters, I do believe. In the last, our last card for her was the fates, all those three female figures with horse, horizontal blank spaces. And here we have, um, have her with these faces on either side of her. It's like this is um, this is a daunting trio, and and they are very very. I was gonna say cold. I mean, I mean, there's like no give and take here. Um, the conventionality in the Hierophant is pretty, pretty infamous, and it's. It's pretty infamous. This character on this card isn't going to understand anything that is outside the box. And not only that, they don't want to deal with anything outside the box. They like everything quiet, conventional, and one, two, three, in order as it should be. Sibling number one, four of pentacles. Oh, this is that lady, or this is a sibling number one, I'm going to call her, um, uh, is just, um, she's the one concerned about appearances, doesn't want to be shown down, you know, to the bone. That would be embarrassing if everybody could see what's really underneath everything. Uh, she's trying very hard to hang on to something. Very hard to hang on to something. But it's not, that's not the way that she wants to, to show herself to people. She doesn't want people to know that, that she's trying very hard to hang on to something. So what is it she's trying so hard to hang on to? Is it, it it's her persona, the persona she's trying to keep to the public? There's something going on with balances and scales and, and, um, just a real struggle to keep something under wraps, to keep something on bay so we look all nice and tidy and and pristine. And we just, that's, hmm, that's what I keep getting for this sibling number one over and over and over and over. I'm still wondering what it is she's trying so hard to hang on to. Oh my gosh. Um, I have a feeling that what it is she's trying so hard to hang on to is not a physical thing. It's a mental thing, an emotional thing, a private, personal sense of being. Sibling number two, the tower. Well, this is the the uh, cards we've had for the sibling number two, besides the chariot, the queen of pentacles, and now we come up with the tower. Uh, she's the one that I feel this um, imbalance of, of energy, up and down and up and down, and calm and erratic, and calm and erratic. Um, and eventually, eventually, she's going to hit the tower. The tower is depicted in this card as a tree, a tree that almost looks like it's been split by lightning it's like it's like going into several different directions it's splintering she may be having a very hard time keeping control of her emotions and herself I'm going to draw one card more for each one of you and that's where I'm going to end this reading I don't know if anything in here is even going to click with you at all um, it sounds like a very odd reading for me, but I don't know these people, and I have never met you. And although I, I have done, I've enjoyed doing readings for you before. And so I'm going to do one more card for each of you. And we'll see as we review this reading, and I edit it and put it together, 
um, if there's clarity in the story here. Your card is the Knight of Pentacles. So you have had the Four of Swords, the Ace of Cups, and the Page of Wands. Your fourth card is the Knight of Pentacles. Oh, the, I love, the card is beautiful in this deck. It is a man holding his pentacle high in his hand and one arm out to balance himself. And he is standing like on the turret of this big stone. It's like he's reached this point. Ta-da! <laughs> it's a ta-da, aha moment. And he is balanced and perched like on the top of a mountain on the spit of a shelf of rock. And he's made it. It was a tremendous climb. It has been a tremendous journey, and it is now a tremendous accomplishment. The fourth card for your mother. Her previous cards were the Four of Cups, the Fates, and the Hierophant. And her fourth card is the Devil. Um, she is just chained to something that... That, that is kind of, I was going to say terrorizer, you know. She's chained to something that is making a slave of her. Um, I go back to that first card, the Four of Cups, the woman on this card. She just, she just is in a daze and she's like not, not looking at that fourth cup, that responsibility, that issue, that individual, that emotion that she needs to feel. And it's um, and it's coming right below the Hierophant too. How how funny is that? The Pope and the Devil conflicting again. Uh, just like your sibling number two, there's the same sense of mental conflict um, with um, your mother and and how she feels about her life in general and how she deals with the energy. Interesting. Okay, we're going to go on to sibling number one. Her cards were the lovers, the world, and the four of pentacles. Her fourth card is six of pentacles. It's a beautiful card, too. This beautiful lady uh, is going to hand her pentacle over to a blindfolded woman who is kneeling in front of her. So, so, what is she trying to give this person something, but she doesn't want the person to know it, or she doesn't want anyone to see it, or see her doing it? Um, there's something very mysterious, and again, it goes back to, um, to being just so um, fixated on on impressions, other people's impressions. Even when she's trying to do something generous, she's still always aware of in her mind, what what is this going to look like? How is this going to be perceived? How am I going to be perceived? That is always in the back of her mind. And sibling number two, her previous cards were the chariot, queen of pentacles, and the tower. Her fourth card is judgment. Mm. I think there's something with sibling number two that she's going to have to rise above. Um, I do believe judgment sometimes means um, second chances. If you can rise above something, that's, that's the thing. Um, like it's all on her. There's this this energy that she's dealing with, I still, I have to, I, I'm dying to know if she is bipolar or if that's just her personality. Back and forth and up and down, very erratic. So let me look at this card for a minute. This feels like someone who has hung on to um, something emotionally for so long that they finally like pulled it up by the roots and um, that's kind of what this person has to do to overcome her tower moment and to get a second chance at something 
at life, at relationships, at, you know, for whatever it is for her. Well, this is a very unusual reading, and, um, and I hope that in the end it makes sense. Um, I will take a picture of the cards, and I will include it in the video, um, as a matter of fact because uh, they're just very beautiful. So I'm going to do that now, and I will get this edited and out to you, and I hope that there's something in here, uh, crumbs of wisdom or crumbs of something that help you along the way and um, give you some perspective to other people around you and their, their motives or their mentality. And until the next time... Until the next video, bye-bye.